Vidic threatened to put me in a coma once. It would have made you more pliable. But if the user isn't engaged, it's a mess. I know they've been working on ways to extract memories and let others sift through those memories. Maybe they're even analyzing mine right now. Maybe they'll find us. I don't know. What I do know is that we've got to get through that door. Yeah. I should probably get back into the Animus. I regret not asking you to hack into the Abstergo servers while you were there. A couple of well-placed relays and we'd be swimming in information. We have everything we need. Yeah, except the key. We're close. How do you know? I just do. I've been poking around a bit. Did you know there are machines down here that make... Well, mana. Wizard mana or biblical mana? What do you think? Biblical, of course. The Greeks called it ambrosia. The Indians, amrit or soma. Most cultures around the world refer to a divine food, though I'd say its taste is anything but. You ate something that came out of a 75,000-year-old machine? And I live to tell the tale. So? What did it taste like? Cardboard. Tasted of cardboard. Hardly the stuff of legends, though I wonder if the first civilization didn't taste differently than we do. Maybe the flavorizer broke. Flavorizer? You've certainly got away with words, Rebecca. Things are getting worse outside. What do you mean? Every day for the past two weeks, the sun has been throwing off larger and larger flares. Older satellites are starting to malfunction. I hear rumblings of recalling the crew on the International Space Station. There's already work being done as well to shield power stations and transformers on the ground. Not that any of it matters. This goes far beyond some brownouts. We all saw what's actually coming. Do you know how it works? Look, I'm no physicist, but it, it's something to do with the Earth's geomagnetic field. The flares and mass ejections disturb it, which appears to trigger seismic events. I've tried reaching out to people who might know better, but they all insist it's bunk. And I don't blame them. It sounds ridiculous. I wish it was. Best we finish up with Connor. Hey, so, uh, when this is over, and assuming it all works out, I was hoping I could, you know, come home. I'd like nothing more. We're almost there, son. We'll have plenty of time to talk when this is all over. We should focus on our work now. Hey, Desmond, didn't Subject 16's... His name was Clay. Sorry, didn't Clay say Washington was a Templar? No. He indicated that Washington came into contact with an Apple of Eden, but beyond that, it's all speculation. Furthermore, judging from the portrait referenced by Clay, the event occurred much later in Washington's life. Perhaps Connor wasn't even involved. It's very hard to know for sure. We'll just have to wait and see what, if anything, happens. So what was it like being back at Abstergo? I didn't expect to get out of there alive. It's a good thing Cross broke down the way he did. If he wasn't losing his mind, I'd probably be dead. I guess he never really recovered. What do you mean? When he first came to us, he was exhibiting symptoms of the bleeding effect. It was real bad. He'd just go in and out at a moment's notice. No animus required. Got a little violent, too, sometimes. It took a while and a bunch of therapy, but we thought we had it under control. Once he went back over to Abstergo, though, who knows what they did to him. I still worry about that happening to me. He was raised in an animus, Desmond. There's overexposure, and then there's... Daniel. Poor guy. That could never happen to you. We won't let it. Hey, when this is all over, we should take a trip somewhere. Celebratory vacation. Yeah. That sounds nice. I'll listen to you. Italy, Brazil, and the United States, all in the span of a few weeks. And you're complaining about not getting out enough? Seriously, Sean? No, not seriously. Are you mad? Trust me, no one wants time off more than I do, right? Do you have any idea how hard it is to crank those database entries out as fast as I do? The sooner we're done here, the sooner we can take that vacation. Yeah, we should probably get back to work.
Home stretch, Desmond. I can feel it. The tides of war are turning. The Loyalists fall back beneath the advancing Patriot army, their hold on this land weakening by the day. But the Templars only seem to grow stronger. Though fewer in number, the threat they pose appears undiminished. Making matters worse, Washington chose to spare the life of Charles Lee. I am told he has taken refuge inside Fort George, and so my days are spent searching for a way to breach its walls. Of my father, there is no trace, and I am glad of it. If I can be rid of Lee, there may still be a chance for reconciliation, and through it, peace. asking for you. Sadness won't sustain me any more than that fool woman's soups and potions. Tell me of your latest exploits. Charles Lee has been exposed, and the Patriots finally rid of him. They march now to secure the remaining cities that this country might finally be free. Then you have won. The land and your people are safe. Yet you seem troubled. Washington spared Lee's life. So long as he lives, all are in danger. The same is true for your father. When you first came to me, you understood what had to be done. Swore you'd see it through. If not for the Brotherhood, for your people, and all those threatened by the Templars. But with Lee gone, my father might... Listen to me. You have not come this far to throw it all away over misplaced sentiment. Both men must die. A Achilles. There is nothing more to discuss. I came as soon as I could. Tell me you bring good news. The Comte de Grasse said yes. You need only join his fleet in Chesapeake Bay and they will serve as required. But what exactly is it you intend? It's better that I show you. Charles Lee may have been dismissed. But it does not mean we are safe. But the commander... The commander underestimates the threat, and no more time can be wasted trying to convince him otherwise. I must do this on my own. Do what, exactly? Kill Charles Lee. He hides within Fort George, which is itself surrounded by a militarized district. I cannot hope to infiltrate it directly. So I will go under instead. Incroyable. The tunnels leading to the fort have been filled in. While I secure the Admiral's ships, I need you to clear them for me. And the ships? When signaled, they will bombard the fort. Breaching its walls and creating a distraction, I see. In the chaos, I will slip inside, find Charles Lee, and silence him forever.
Ready the crew, Mr. Faulkner. We sail for Chesapeake Bay. Lafayette promised me a fleet beyond compare and a captain without peer. Instead, I find myself greeted by one old ship in a boy in costume. I promise we are all you need, Admiral. I doubt this very much, but beggars do not choose. Mm -hmm. And the ships I require? They are yours, provided we survive this. Well, what would you have me do? Hold the bay while I engage the main fleet. Should any British ships dare approach, destroy them. They must be kept from Yorktown. Enemy! 